Hi Pisces Sun and Rising, welcome to your November 2024 Astro Update. It's Raina here. We start the month with a new moon in fellow water sign Scorpio. And this is falling in your ninth house, which is a house that you have some connection to, believe it or not, because this is Sagittarius's house in astrology. And Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, which is the ancient ruler of Pisces. So sometimes when we're talking about 12th house transits, they can resemble 9th house transits. Um, some examples are, uh, in particular, that I would associate with um, the 9th house are long distance travel, but also religion, religion. It's the higher mind, so it can be studying something at a more sophisticated level so whether it's philosophical and that can include religious philosophies or if it is in academia some everything to do with expansion that is jupiter so a new moon could see some developments in this particular area um, something new some new place you want to go and um, maybe you're making travel plans. This is a month where the holiday season begins. And, you know, it's, it's a time when people tend to take vacations for sure. And um, you've had Mercury here. So you might be researching, you know, uh, even in October. With Mercury in this sector, you may have been researching places that you would like to visit. Also, and then you have this new moon, and so that kind of like um, moves it along as something that you're going to actually uh, do. But you might be starting uh, <laughs> university. I know it's I know it's uh, November, so that'd be kind of a strange time but nowadays uh, if you're doing online studies or maybe it's not even that maybe you're studying to become a yoga teacher that could be um, what this represents for you on the second mercury goes into Sagittarius in that 10th house Pisces and mercury is all about communication now of course if you are someone who has the credentials to teach others you might be beginning some kind of teaching again yoga teaching or meditation i'm thinking of pisces the kind of person you are but it might just be elementary school who knows um and uh and in that case maybe the new moon in the ninth house is getting your teaching certificate or something so you have this new accomplishment that you that you're receiving and then you're able to teach um the tenth house can be authority figure so you could be communicating with people in positions of authority i would assume that would especially be if you are interviewing for positions for instance on the third mars goes into leo this is very important for all of us because of the length of time it's spending in Leo and the and the prior sign Cancer. So um, this will affect your fifth and sixth houses. Um, for you, Leo is your sixth house. And a Mars in the sixth can be conflict. There could be conflict with co-workers. There might be conflict with um, your place of employment you know your boss or you know of course I was just talking about Mercury communicating with superiors but maybe that's the person above your boss maybe you're uh, you know communicating with the owner of the company and saying my boss is driving me crazy or something like that um Mars in the sixth house can be competition. Mars can be competition. 
and maybe you feel like a, con a, a competitive vibe in the workplace, you might not like that because Pisces people tend not to like competition. Um, you're more interested in everybody getting along and you don't, you're not the kind of sign that wants to necessarily stand out from other people. Obviously there might be some, uh, Pisces people who have Aries. Maybe you have, um, if you're a sun in Pisces, you have Mars and Aries and it might not be what I'm saying. Um, not every Pisces person is exactly the same for sure. But I think in general, you're the type of sign that would rather have harmony and more equity in the workplace. And, but it, but this could be, um, the sixth house can be your health. So this could be like you start to work out. You have that energy to work out so that you can, um, improve your health, improve your stamina. So it might be something as benign as that. On the 11th, 1111, I know you Pisces people know about that. Um, Venus goes into Capricorn, which for you is the 11th house. Uh, oh, there's another 11 there of friendships and groups, your hopes and wishes and gains. Starting with gains, this is like your profits if you own your own business or your um, salary, whatever you want to call it, that too. That could increase. Venus is the ruler of the second house of earned income. It could even be like a raise and maybe there is something that is connected to um, some of these other transits that is bringing this about like Mercury in, in uh, Sagittarius in the 10th house. Um, it can also be, Venus also rules the seventh house in astrology, which is committed partnership. Venus, we associate with the goddess of love and beauty. So you may meet someone that you fall in love with, or at least that you have, maybe you have feelings for through your friends, through a night out with your friends. On the 15th, there is a full moon at 24 degrees of Taurus, as well as Saturn going direct in your sign. Let's start with that, Pisces. So Saturn has been in your sign since March of 2023, so a year and a half. Um, it will remain here. Um, it will go briefly into Aries and then it will go back. I think at the end of 2025, it will, it'll end 2025 with it being in Pisces still retrograding might've gone direct, but still like not, not back into Aries. So we'll see. So when Saturn is in your sign, that's the first house and well, we're just going to say it's always the first house. It's not always the first house, but we will say. And, um, for Pisces people, like you're ruled by Neptune and, uh, Neptune is also in Pisces. So you have two of these longer range influences. Uh, Neptune is way longer than Pisces, than Saturn though, in your sign. And so the Neptune part, because it is your ruler is going to, exacerbate or emphasize the Pisces energy, maybe like increase it. And that's not always the best because, um, for instance, Neptune is about illusion. Sometimes it is about, you know, like fantasy and dissolving. So it means like it's not about um, boundaries, you know, it's very open-ended and Saturn is about boundaries. So it's actually a good thing that you have Saturn transiting this house for another year or so, because it will help you to take any of those, um, Neptunian dreams and really ground them into reality, meaning that they cease to just be fantasies, but you can turn them into realities. 
And so now that Saturn is direct, it will bring back that outer discipline that you can employ in your life to make things happen. Basically, how I see it is doing um, the same things every day. Not that you're doing everything in your life the same, but I'm saying that you have a routine, that you have these things. Like if you have like a goal that you're not being sporadic about it, that you're just doing it, even if it's just a little bit. If you Let's say you were writing a book. A lot of times people get grandiose about it. Oh my God, I'm going to write a 500-page book. Well, okay, you want to write a 500-page book. You don't have to write 20 pages a day. You might only have to write one page a day. Make it a good page, but just one page or two pages. Over time, if you're consistent, you will achieve that goal. And you're probably more likely to do so than if you set this, you know, very difficult goal to follow that you may just kind of give up at some point and then you don't do it at all. Well, what point, you know, what is the value in that? If you're not willing to, um, you know, go all out, um, you know, it's, you know, it, well, I'm saying, you know, when you go all out, that can lead to burnout. If you are very moderate, you may sustain something longer because it is sustainable. So anyway, um, that's good. And the full moon at 24 degrees of Taurus is falling in your third house, which is the house of Gemini in astrology and the house of the mundane mind, just like the ninth house, which in your chart is Scorpio, but is Sagittarius in the universal chart is about the, um, the higher mind. This is about the mundane mind, meaning uh, you know, the, the mind that we use to, to, to travel through this world and function. And it, it, it deals with teaching and learning as well as any kind of, um, I mean, just the mind itself. So the state of the mind. So when you have, um, the full moon here, it can mean that something kind of, uh, it's like a eureka moment or like a spiritual download or that you're, maybe you're, you, you're uh, ending some kind of training for the mind, like a meditation course that you were taking or any kind of course, actually, because, um, it, this can be getting your credentials and something. And it's also like your siblings. So there may be some something that you realize about one of your siblings or you hear news about them. This is the house of social media and media in general. So it could be some kind of thing that comes up that you find out about. Um, I would even say if somebody has a social media account, it could blow up. It could, it could expand because... Uh, full moons bring things into fruition too. On the 19th, this is an important day for humanity. Pluto goes back into Aquarius for 20 years. And you have had a reprieve of that because Pluto went back into your 11th house and now it's in your, your 12th house for 20 years. This is the house that you rule in astrology, Pisces. But my God, Pluto... <laughs> Of all these plants, you had Saturn here. That was the dark night of the soul. What is Pluto? Is it light and fluffy? Well, no, but it can. One of the main things it can do, Pisces, if you have any self-destructive habits and Saturn didn't take care of them, I have a feeling that this will. So Pluto can be transformational, empowering influence. And it can be something that the word that came to my mind is regenerative because Pluto is the ruler of the eighth house. It's one of the rulers of Scorpio and it deals with, 
um, this sense of rebirth. So maybe for some of you, this is a spiritual rebirth. If you have kind of like shoved your, your spirituality into a closet, um, why would a Pisces person do this? Well, some Pisces are so highly empathic and psychic that it can be scary, I would imagine, that, you know, you're able to have all of these uh, experiences that other people don't have, and it may feel overwhelming, especially if you feel like you can't control it. Um, I always say that schizophrenics are, are people who are um, tuning into the uh, other dimensions, but they don't have um, the ability to kind of turn it on and off. So it, it's, it looks like madness, and it is. It is a form of madness, I guess you could say. But it's because they're, um, you know, they're, they're kind of like this open channel, and it just it creates a lot of chaos. And, uh, and they may not be channeling the best <laughs> that's out there <laughs> of disembodied spirits, let's put it that way. So, um, yeah, so this is a, a time for you to empower yourself at the deepest level because the 12th house can be unconscious memories and you may have these, these deeply, deeply embedded programs of being a victim. You know, that is kind of like what Pisces represents the 12th house and even suffering and that Christ complex, you know, that sometimes people get where they feel like they have to atone for the sins of humanity. Well, we're, we're not in the Piscean age. I think on uh, November 19th, that is when we fully get into the Aquarian age. Who would have thunk that it's actually Pluto and Aquarius that got, gets us into the Aquarian age? Um, on the 21st, the sun goes into Sagittarius, so the sun goes into that 10th house of career, and you are like a boss, doing your thing, um, feeling very, maybe having some kind of leadership abilities, or just, you know, into your career for some reason. Um, on the 25th, there's a Mercury retrograde at 22 degrees of Sagittarius, so this will be in this uh, career sector. So if you have been, you know, if you're bet in between jobs and you're kind of, uh, trying to get some kind of career, um, off the ground, there might still be some snafus or even rethinking of your goals. And that's okay because, uh, Mercury is very quick transiting through um the houses so it will it will go direct in mid-december and then come out come out of its shadow a few weeks later so it's all good by the beginning of the new year you should be much more aware of what it is that you want but remember you are going to have mars in the sixth house and it is going to be mars will be retrograde as the year begins so it's not like it's going to be just everything's going to be perfect. There probably will be things that you'll have to deal with, contend with for maybe the first few months of the year. Um, again, this is just one interpretation. Doesn't mean that that's going to affect your workplace. All right, Pisces, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.